This is a short video on standing waves. This video is made possible by simulation at fat.colorado.edu. This is the link to the simulation, phet.colorado.edu. And you can browse to the wave on a string simulation, or this is the full uh, URL. So um, this simulation shows wave on a string. And I'm going to use this simulation to set up uh, a periodic wave and use that to demonstrate what standing wave looks like, how it behaves. So this is what periodic wave looks like. I'm going to make a few changes to make it easier to see a standing waves on this. Now, this is what's called a traveling wave. Um, you generate wave on one end and the wave travels and it exits the other end. So I'm going to make a standing wave by putting a, imposing a boundary at the other end. And uh, let me just show you what this looks like. If I send in a little pulse, this pulse will bounce off at the boundary and then go to the other end and then bounce off and then back and forth. So a standing wave is a result of superposition of those uh, reflected waves. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to time the a wave, how long it takes to get to the end, that will help me set the uh, correct frequency for the uh, uh, standing wave. All right, I'm going to start the timer and start the pulse. So it takes stop. All right, about 1.2 seconds to reach the end here. So I'm going to set the frequency so that. Um, uh, frequency is 1 over 1.2 seconds. My calculator tells me my frequency should be 0 0.83 hertz. So let me set the frequency there, 0 0.83 hertz. Um, let me reduce the amplitude a little. And then let's see what happens. Um, oh wait, slow motion is way too slow. Almost. So this is what a standing wave looks like. We call it standing wave because, well, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It's a superposition of wave traveling that's traveling to the right and wave that's traveling to the left. And this uh, standing wave has nodes that are the points that don't move that much. And so the, this end point is obviously a node. And it has two more nodes that um, that do not have to be fixed, but somehow end up that end up being fixed. One node is here. It moves a little bit, but compared to the rest of the wave, especially now, it's not moving a lot. So we'll call that a node. And this end is also a node. Um, it's the end we are shaking, but once again, compared to the rest of the wave, it's not moving a lot. So we call this a node as well. So it turn. So this is a standing wave. It's one of the ones with the lower uh, frequencies or longer wavelength. But it turns out this is not the one with the uh, longest wavelength. In fact, I can go half a frequency of what I have there, and I'll still get a standing wave. So 0 0.42 or so. All right, and this will also give me a standing wave. Wait a little while for the wave to build up. And you will see that we don't have any node in between anymore. The only nodes are at the end points. And this is a standing wave. And, um, and if you play with the simulation, what you will find is that you get these standing waves only at special frequencies. If I pick any old frequency, like 0 0.6 hertz, you will find that you don't get a standing wave you will get a wave that's uh, sort of chaotically varying in shape and you will never build up large standing wave like you were seeing before. So it's because the standing waves has to satisfy certain conditions. Here the conditions are what's called the boundary condition. So at the boundary, let me get me back to, oh, let me get myself a different standing wave. So I had a 0 0.83 hertz. I can add 0. 1.25. So that should be another um, frequency for standing wave. 1.25. Restart. 
So when you build up a standing wave, these standing waves, they can only have certain wavelengths. And these wavelengths are chosen so that it satisfy this, satisfies this condition. When you look at the standing wave, what you should notice is that um, it has nodes at the end point. So node here and node here. So that's the boundary condition. And many different wavelengths that fit that condition can fit there. So the one you saw with the longest wavelength was when where you have node here, no other node in between, and the other node here. And as you see here, as I increase frequency, at the frequencies where I can get standing wave is where I have one more node, that was the one before this, or where I have two more nodes between these two nodes at the end point. So that's an example of standing wave. Now, in your homework and textbook, we talk about other standing waves as well. One in particular is a standing wave of a standing sound wave in a, um, in a tube, either one with an open end and a closed end or both open ends. And I want you to demonstrate how some of those standing waves might look like on this wave on a string. So I can get that if I pick end with a loose end. So you will find that what used to be standing wave is not really standing wave uh, once this boundary conditions change. All right, let's go back and restart. So if I try to set up a standing wave here, now the problem I get is if, um, this frequency was set with a condition that uh, I have node here and I have a node here. But when I have a loose end here, this end is no longer going to be a node. It's going to be an anti-node. So I need a new frequency for that. Now, so 0 0.43, no, 42 was the frequency that gave me the longest wavelength um, uh, standing wave. Now, I happen to know 0 0.21 will give me the longest wavelength standing wave here. So let's try that. All right, it's going to take a while to build up. All right, I guess that's good enough. So yeah, that's the uh, standing wave where this time the boundary condition is different. I have node here still, and I have an anti-node. This is the point that moves the most. And in between, I have no other nodes for the longest wavelength. So. Um, so what this is showing is this is a quarter of the whole wavelength. So uh, for the uh, next uh, high wavelength, if I double this, that won't quite get me there because then I'm trying to show half of a wavelength, then I'll end with a node. So I need three times this. Let's go see. So 0 0.63 or so. And let's see what that gives us. That's the standing wave. So this is the next one that fits the boundary conditions. So um, the first one that fit the boundary condition only fit a quarter of the wave into the, the length that we had. The next one, I, the wave cannot end here. That won't fit the boundary condition for the standing wave. So we had to go all the way out here. This will, so this is three quarters of a wavelength. This gets us the uh, next condition for the standing wave. So these are the examples of standing waves that I wanted you to see. Um, so the level of calculation you would be expected to do are the ones you see in the homework, which um, uh, there's a couple questions that might be a little bit difficult. Uh, ask me any questions uh, through Connect. Ask your instructor feature. Um, but um, so I just wanted you to see these um, examples of standing waves so that you have a correct mental picture when we talk about standing waves. All right. Um, until next video, uh, goodbye.